One of the best things about Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is the ability to tame wild familiars that roam the open world and have them at the forefront in creature battles to do your bidding. While some familiars can be obtained through story progression, most of them must be tamed by Esther. Familiars come in a variety of shapes and sizes and they all have different abilities and strengths and weaknesses. I could create a video that outlines the best familiars in terms of creature genuses, familiar signs, item drops or which ones have the best special attacks but instead I'm just going to discuss the ones that I have found to be game changing that are often overlooked. Hello I'm Heather at Amalgamingle and today I want to highlight the top 5 best familiars in Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. The first familiar that Oliver gains is called a Mighty, and he will remain the best familiar in your party until you reach the Temple of Trials. Although his base stats are fairly average, he has strong physical attacks, and his cut loose and smash hit moves can devastate enemies in battle. Not to mention his impressive miracle move Slash Dance, which is a force to be reckoned with. Naturally, being the first familiar to join the party allows the mighty to rack up XP early and get stronger before any other familiar joins the team. Due to this, the mighty ends up being the default familiar for the first section of the game. Although he is vulnerable to confusion, he is highly resistant against poison and curses. Mighty has a fast growth rate and his later forms can develop some impressive abilities. The Mighty metamorphs into a Mighty Mighty and then the player can choose between a Dynamite or Mermighty as the final form. It is at the Temple of Trials that I tend to put my Mighty on the back burner, primarily because the game forces you to prematurely metamorph the Mighty into a, his second form as part of a tutorial. Once this is done, the second form reverts back to level 1, albeit a stronger version than the Mighty was at level 1. The Familiar will then need levelling up again, but at this point in the game you have access to Familiars that are already much stronger than a level 1 Mighty Mighty. If you love Mighties and want to max one out to their full potential, the Mighties can be found roaming around Ugly Duckling Isle later in the game. But do make sure you are fully prepared before going to Ugly Duckling Isle, because the Mighties found here are not easy to defeat and neither are the other Familiars that reside here. The Mighty Mighty can be found around Billy Goat's Bluff and Mermighties are in the Ivory Tower, but please note that Dynamites cannot be found in the Overworld, as is the case with a large percentage of Familiar's final forms. The only way to obtain them is to metamorph the Familiar from its second form into the desired third form. A useful tip if you are going for the Familiarologist trophy. It's always a good idea to ensure that you have a good healer on your team, and while Esther's starter familiar Drongo is extremely useful for its healing powers and storm attacks, the Lagoon Nyad is much more powerful and is one of the earlier familiars that you have access to. The Lagoon Nyad is one of three familiars that you are allowed to choose after completing the Temple of Trials, and I highly recommend choosing the Nyad over the other two familiars. The main reason for this is that the other two familiars can be tamed in the sections of the games to follow this section anyway. The Nyad has the Healing Tear trick from level 1, and the Healing Rain trick can be learnt at level 28 of its second form, the Sea Nyad. You can then choose between the Lesser Spotted Nyad or the Greater Nyad as its final form. I would highly recommend choosing the Greater Nyad for one very specific reason. The Greater Nyad has the ability to bring fallen party members back from unconsciousness using its Upsy Daisy trick gained at level 28. This removes the need to stock up on expensive Phoenix feathers. Although there are other familiars that can learn the up-to-daisy trick, such as the Paleolith, the Floroborus, and Doco Toco, the Nyad has fantastic healing abilities and bagging one of these creatures this early in the game is certainly a boon. Okay, so this next entry is a little bit of a cheat one, because even though the Toco can be tamed and does have some fantastic healing abilities, this skittish green blob of a familiar makes the list for its truly life-saving XP gains when defeated in battle. The Toco metamorphs into a Toco Toco, and then its final form is a choice between the Toco Tocold and the Doco Toco. The amount of XP you gain increases incrementally based on the stage of Toco that is defeated. The Toco can be found on Ugly Duckling Isle 
on the most northern part of the map and offers 2,000 experience upon defeat. The Taco Taco can be found on the route to Perdida and gives the player around 8,000 XP and the final form can be found in the Ivory Tower granting around 24,000 XP on defeat. It is wise to take out the tacos first with a single blow to avoid them from fleeing the battle and losing the XP. It's also easier to sneak up on tacos after gaining the Veil Magic spell, which covers your scent and makes them less likely to run away. The Veil spell can be gained from Horus after correctly answering his riddle in Padida. I'm sure we can all agree that farming XP from tacos at certain stages throughout the game can be very rewarding, and particularly useful if you intend on completing the Solosium series and the post-game The Conductor Quest where you go up against the Guardian of Worlds. If you did want to tame the Taco Taco and was willing to put in the time and effort required to nurture it, then you would end up having quite a powerful ally. Not only does Taco Taco have the Healing Rain trick, which heals the entire party's HP, but its final form Doco Taco has the Upsy Daisy trick, just like the Naiad, that can restore party members' consciousness. The taco is vulnerable to being cursed but resistant against being nixed and its miracle move Groundswell causes physical damage to all enemies in its radius. Unfortunately, with only a 2% chance of taming and the taco taco having even a smaller chance at 1.6%, it seems more hassle than it's worth to tame and nurture when there are other familiars that are easier to tame with the same abilities. Considering this and the huge amounts of XP needed for each metamorphosis, it is understandable that the taco gets overlooked for anything other than its huge XP gains. The minute I get to the Temple of Trials, the wonderful Griffy replaces my Mighty as my primary familiar. As I understand it, the Griffy cannot be tamed within the game. This familiar was initially a perk given to those who pre-ordered the game through Amazon on PS3, but it's now accessible to all by trading in a familiar ticket, which is already in your bottomless bag, at the Temple of Trials before leaving. If you have Griffy as your main familiar then you will immediately see the scales tip in your favour in battles, because this familiar is very strong. Griffy pecks enemies as his main physical attack and he has some excellent tricks up his sleeve. Griffy is one of the familiars that I take the time and effort to max out the stats for and the familiarity because it remains my go-to familiar for the entire middle section of the game. Griffy's Phantom Fangs ability is my favourite trick. Although using it does spend quite a bit of MP, it often kills enemies outright, making it perfect for taco farming and whittling down big chunks of health of harder enemies. The Belly Buster trick is also a great move that I often use to follow up the Phantom Fangs if the enemy survives the attack. The Griffy has the miracle move of Inner Strength which increases its physical attack by 35% for 30 seconds. Which might not sound like a lot but it definitely makes a difference and you can rain hell on enemies during this time. Griffy is resistant to sleep effects but is vulnerable to blindness but this matters not providing that you have lots of blindness begones in your inventory. It also has the ability to psych up during battle, which increases attack damage, speed and interrupts enemy attacks for our duration. Unfortunately, with most things in life, there is a trade-off with this. Any familiar that has psych up instead of defend or evade has no significant natural defence. In order to defend against incoming attacks, it's best to put the entire party into all-out defence and switch back to Oliver to defend, something that comes quite naturally once you get the hang of the battle controls. Despite Griffith's shortfalls, this is definitely one of my two favourite familiars. My all-time favourite familiar is by far the mighty Dinoceros. The moment you can reach the genie's footsteps after completing the Sky Pirates section of the game, I would 100% recommend going to tame a Dinoceros, which has a 6% chance of taming. The Dinoceros has very high attack power and can gain the Air Splitter trick as a magical ability. Air Splitter generates a powerful destructive force that damages all enemies on the battlefield. Although other familiars also have this ability, such as the Rough and the Saw Boar, and you can feed other familiars Air Splitter gems, it is much more impactful using it through Dinoceros, owing to his brute strength and ability to inflict higher attack damage. 
Dinoceros has pretty high defence, is resistant to unconsciousness and can withstand a lot of damage himself. He's basically a slow moving tank on the battlefield, but being a slow mover matters not because there are items you can equip to counteract his slow movement speed. Dinoceros metamorphs into a Destroceros and it is at level 7 that Destroceros learns the Air Splitter ability. It is with this familiar that gaining S rank in the Solaceum series becomes possible. His high physical attack allows you to conserve MP in the first two or three rounds so that you can use Oliver's magic and air splitter all out in the final round to ensure success. This is a strategy that has worked very well for me several times. The second form, Destroceros, metamorphs into either a Catastroceros or a Demoliceros. Both are fantastic, powerful final forms, so it's entirely up to you which one you would prefer. With a full party at level 99 after Toco Toco farming and Dinoceros maxed out to his full potential, Oliver and company can truly become a force to be reckoned with. So, there you have it. There are my top picks of the 5 best familiars in Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. There are a lot of other great familiars in the game and it is worth taming as many as you can. Not only for the familiarologist trophy but also because it's a good idea to experiment with different ones and see what lineup works best for you. Plus it's tons of fun to see what familiars metamorph into and what exactly they are capable of. So let me know in the comments if you agree with my entries and which familiars are your favourite. I'm also doing a guided walkthrough of this game with amusing narration, helpful tips and commentary, so be sure to check that out. I've been Heather at Amalgamingle and thank you very much for watching.